Welcome back, I am some guy you've never heard of, and this is Pathfinder Kingmaker, the Chronicle of Arius Cyril. Alright, um, well, it's a party. Let's mingle. Who's this fellow here? Lander, a handsome, well-dressed young man of about 17 years old, looks at you with a polite smile. So you're the famous slayer of the Stag Lord's gang, soon to be a baron. Pleased to make your acquaintance. My name is Lander. Just Lander? No last name? No title? Well, let's just say I'm here incognito. Under my circumstances, it's wise to keep one's lineage to oneself. Truth be told, that's precisely what I wanted to speak with you about. You see, I'm an heir to one of Bravois' noble houses. I won't say which, but believe me, a newly appointed baron with no connections would do well to have a friend like me. I travel the country in secret, without servants, so I can see it for myself. Not from a carriage window, but face to face with the people. My family would never approve, of course, but then I never asked. I need to know Brevoy if I'm going to rule a part of it someday. Well, then why do you want to come to the Stolen Lands? That's not Brevoy. I know Jamaldi wants to impose her stepson on you as an emissary of Brevoy. Refuse. Take me instead. Don't look at my age. While they may have trained this half-orc to swing a sword, I've been training to rule since I was a child. I'll be of far greater use to you, both now and in the future, and I have a firm position within my with the, I have a firm position in my family. Um Yeah, I'll consider your proposal. Yes, do so, and carefully. Alright, who's this? A guard? Oh, Jethal. How's it going? They call this a feast? I'd show uh, them some real festivities if they'd let me. Well, it's a feast, not a festival. Megar Varn. This man is obviously more comfortable on the battlefield than in the company of nobles. He's well built, but the expansive waist coast the expensive weight coast he's wearing doesn't quite fit properly, as though it was borrowed. He has a few pale scars across his face, and his dark hair is drawn into an unkempt ponytail, with a few streaks of grey running through it. He greets you with a broad smile and a firm handshake. Let me introduce myself. I am Megar Varn, the new ruler of Dunsward, your neighbor to the east. Like you, I'm about to be a baron. Great job with the Staglord, by the way. Not everyone could exterminate a whole gang of bandits with such a small team. How did you earn the title of Baron? Truth be told, my team and I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Jamandi Eldori needed someone reliable to take hold, take and hold the territory. I'm the captain of a mercenary team, if that wasn't clear. Varnling Host. Have you, have you heard of us? No, no matter. We've done work for Jamandi before. This time, the task was simple. We just waltzed into the area, cleared it of the most brazen monsters, and built a small fort to hold the place. And for that, a barony, and land to own. It was a dream job. Ah, how do you feel being a noble? Looking at his rich clothes, foreign smirks. Like a pheasant on a plate, I have killed all kinds of monsters, but this is the first time I have so strongly felt like turning away could get me eaten. He nods toward an arrogant man in the corner of the room. See that lad? Baron Drelev. He's not like us. Who knows what generation of Baron he is. Didn't even shake my hand. You and me, we're like dirt beneath his boots. That's why those like us, the newly made nobility, need to stick together. Otherwise, he'd take my land and yours in the blink of an eye. Alright, well it was nice meeting you. Goodbye. Once you've settled in, come pay us a visit. 
There's a guest. It's nice to see the beginning of a future noble family. There's Keston. Well, Tartuccio, hey, well, scum, how... And how did we... Hmm, maybe I've had one too many. Hey, Lindsay. Pour up to the brim so that... So that... Oh, I must... Be drunk. I forgot the line. Oh, someone is approaching me. Will you drink with me? Um, you see Cassie approaching, approaching the tiefling you met during the battle at Jamaldi Eldori's mansion. As she draws near, she places one of the cups of wine she's holding into your hand. Of course, to beauty. To beauty. It sweetens our happy days and brings solace to our dark and sorrowful ones. But jokes aside, I came to apologize. I know the words I said in our conversation with Lady Aldery might have offended you, but this was not my intention. The lessons life has dealt me were not easy. I've learned to be wary of new acquaintances, which is why I've refused to join your party. I hope you will forgive me for this weakness and for my harsh words. And I hope you will hear me out, for I have something to tell you. Um, no need to apologize. I don't expect everyone I meet to immediately fall under my charms and entrust me with all their secrets. Amusing. Usually those who don't seek affection are the very ones who receive it. Anyway, enough sweet talk. There is something important I wanted to tell you. As it happens, I came across some very valuable information. What brave conqueror of these wild lands wouldn't be intrigued by news of an ancient shrine, possibly full of great treasures? A place such as this was discovered by my old friends from Kadira, and it just so happens to be located in the lands that today become rightfully yours. My friends lack the courage to enter the shrine and seek the treasure, but what will stop us? We who know the taste of battle and have been singed by the same fire. What could be better than a treasure hunt? I'm ready. I'm sure you'd like to finally gain your official title and celebrate your victory. And I don't like noisy parties and ceremonies. Find me when you return to your dominion. I'll rent a house in your capital. We can discuss the details of our expedition there. We have no capital yet, and I don't think there are any houses, but all right. So long, friend. I'll call you so today, because soon enough, all you'll be hearing is Your Grace, Your Grace, Your Grace. Saluting you with the cup, the tiefling girl steps back and disappears in the shadows between the columns. Your Grace, I'm to be a baron, not a duke. Interesting, things are happening. Oh, okay, that's just that stuff, okay. Alright, so I gotta see her again in my capital once I have one. Um, who's this person? Ah, yes, I see old Restov hasn't changed a bit. Even the smell in the streets is the same. Alright, who's this? Natala Sertova is discussing something with an unfamiliar old lady in a low voice. Upon noticing you, she breaks into a sugary sweet smile. You are not only tough, but quick. Well, congratulations on your victory. Enjoy it while you can. Oh, what do you think awaits me? Nothing good, I fear. The Aldori, our dearest friends, didn't seem it, deem it necessary to inform you of their plans, I assume. You see, they are preparing to separate from Bravoy. It will not be a peaceful process. They lack the strength currently, hence using the legal loophole to create some independent allies. Once the civil war breaks out, your lands will be the first to endure a strike from Bravoy's forces. Perhaps they'll erect a memorial stone in independent Restov to honor you. Well, I wouldn't count on even that, really. 
Oh, and what would you what would you propose? In your situation, the most reasonable course of action would be to align yourself with the lawful rulers of Brevoy, the noble houses. The Aldori won't dare to rebel, knowing they will immediately become entrapped. You could help Brevoy avoid a civil war while simultaneously enjoying some well-deserved peace in your in your lands. I believe Jamandi has already attempted to impose a guard on you as an emissary. I'm guessing her low-born stepson, the green-skinned boy, Kassil. It's up to you, of course, but I would recommend you a different envoy. Please, meet Chandra Mervi, an experienced diplomat who's far more familiar with Brevoy's polit politics than any brawler could be. The old woman standing next to Natalia gives you a slight bow. I would be happy to help you establish diplomatic relations with Brevoy. <clears throat> Alright, I will consider your proposal. Think on it. Do not make any hasty decisions. Um, all of high society... Oh no. I missed what he was saying. Oh, there's a guest. Oh, these young heroes. Such bravery, such spirit. Why, I remember when I was your age. Work my way down the table here. It's nice to see the beginning of a future noble family. So it was you who dealt with the Stag Lord? Allow me to shake your hand. Hey, Tristian. These people are not just celebrating. It seems your feat has given them new hope. Oh, these young heroes. Such bravery, such spirit. Why, I remember when I was your age. Hey, Amiri. Their wine is alright. Nice and strong, but the appetizer's barely a mouthful. That's what an appetizer is, Amiri. It's not a main course. It is supposed to be barely... A mouthful, it like whets your appetite. Oh, hey, harem. A feast in time of pestilence, a ludicrous attempt to sink into reverie, to digress from contemplating one's own insignificance. All right. Guess, not saying anything new. All right. Who's this here? Just another guest. Hannes Drelev. This man's gorgeous clothes hide rippling muscles beneath them. He looks past your ear, obviously bored. Baron Hannes Drelev, he says offhandedly, emphasizing the word Baron. And you must be the Stag Lord Butcher. I'm sorry, I quite forgot your name. But you took out the Stag Lord and his gang, and so Sword Lord Jamandi is granting you permission to take his place, right? Well, congratulations. My lands lie to the west of yours. I suppose we're neighbors near. No, sorry. Yes, I defeated the Stag Lord. Pray tell, what did you do to deserve your new dominion? A smirk appears on the Baron's face. I don't need to deserve or prove anything. Countless generations of my glorious ancestors have done so for me. If I had a slightly bigger army, Sword Lord Jamandi would have simply given all of the stolen lands to me. Alas, I don't have so many soldiers at my disposal. So she has. So she had to urgently make barons of the likes of you and Varn. So you have no army? No special merits? You were just given land for being pretty? Under other circumstances, I'd have you whipped for such words, but let's not ruin Lady Eldori's celebrations, hmm? If you want so badly to measure merits, we can do so another time. You're not very polite for a nobleman. Ha! Huh. Politeness must be deserved. No, politeness is the default. Alright, goodbye. Not even dining dining to reply, Baron uh, Drelov turns around and looks away. You monster. Politeness is the default. Respect needs to be earned. Politeness is the baseline. If you're not polite to people, they're not going to respect you, or treat you well if you need it. See, like right now, based on our interactions, if there was some issue, and like, you needed help, or Varn needed help, and I only had the resources to help one of you, um, guess who it's not going to be? 
Valerie, truth be told, I'm not really comfortable here. I lost my taste for high society. Understandable. Just another guest. Octavia's here. Mmm, try the eclairs. They're delicious. That sounds awesome. Haha, <laughs> to victory, to freedom. Bottoms up, bottoms up, yes. Alright, Regongar. Ezvanki Keeg? Who's this? A handsome man with a weather-beaten face grasps your hand tightly in his rough, calloused palms. Unlike the rest of the guests in their festive clothes, he wears a simple robe. The only luxury you see on him is a holy symbol of a rastel, made of solid gold. The other guests look at him with respect, some bordering on awe. Congratulations on your victory, he says in a deep voice. Oh, sorry. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Ezvanki Keeg, High Priest of a Rastel in Restov. Um... I'll make this diplomacy check. Bringing law to the Stolen Lands is a difficult endeavor. I would be grateful for any help you could spare. This is truly, this is a truly noble undertaking. I believe our community will be able to provide you with reasonable assistance. We will help you construct a shrine in your capital, free of charge. Do many people in Restov venerate Arastel? They revere many gods in Rastov. They pray to Abadar, patron of cities, and Farazma, gatherer of souls. There are also some more rare cults, but there's no denying that the stag god has the largest congregation here. And no wonder. People have lived off farming and hunting for centuries. You're dressed surprisingly simple for such a festive occasion. The corners of the priest's mouth turn up into a faint smile. The noblest dress in silks and satins to stand out from the poor. The priest wears a simple robe to stand out from the nobles. I get you. It was an honor to meet you. Goodbye. Arastel keep you. And there's a guard here. Alright. Um. The people want me to take an envoy with me. Should I? If so, who? Who are these people? Yosef Selamius. Let's talk to him. An older man with sideburns looks at you with interest through a golden eyeglass. Well now, if it isn't the hero of the festivities, the protege of our dear Jamandi. You pulled this all off quite clever cleverly, I confess. I wasn't convinced your enterprise would succeed. I even bet a bottle of my best Pitaxian wine against you, but I'm happy to admit I was wrong. The Eldori have always been adept at finding new talent. I don't believe we've been introduced. So it would seem, I am Yophis Selemius, Lord Mayor of Restov. I rule this town and the adjacent lands. As your northern neighbor, I hope we can look forward to a long and fruitful friendship. So you rule Restov? And what about the Eldori? Ah, Brevois' politics seem complex and incomprehensible to many. Here in this part of Rostland, the spirit of northern freedom still lives. We are loyal to the throne, of course. May the gods prolong the life of his highness. But... But there are... But here, far from the domains of the great houses, we have our own way of life. It is especially important now, after the certain events that I probably don't need to name. The Aldori sword lords used to rule Rostland. They're still, and they're still the largest landowners and main military force in the region. But it's not for nothing that Restoff is called a free city. We're proud to choose the Lord Mayor from among the citizens, considered not by their lineage, but by their own merits. Alright, what kind of events were you talking about? Mayor Salimius gives you a patronizing smile. Why, an inspiring politician needs to be well informed. I'm talking, of course, about the disappearance of the ruling house Rogvaria. I'm sorry, Rogarvia. Can you imagine it? Old man Coral conquered our lands two centuries ago. It would be a shameless lie to say that nobody wished his royal house could just disappear into thin air, but once that exact thing happened, turned out nobody was ready for it. 
poof, all over the country, every member of the royal house disappeared without a trace. Nobody knows what happened, it is a mystery, but a mystery pregnant with opportunity for everyone. How are things in Rostov? I don't want to boast, but things have been going well in recent years. Trade prospers, the population grows, and the citizens are happy. Although recently, especially after the disappearance of House Rogarvia, more and more troublemakers have been appearing, and people are talking about the most shocking things. But those sorts of rumors aren't worthy of your attention. Yeah, well thank you. It was nice meeting you. Please, wait a moment. Your young barony will need resources to establish itself, and from what I've been told, you're somewhat in need of financial assistance. I could organize and supply everything you need for the construction, and spread out the cost on extremely favorable terms. I could immediately procure, let's say, 500 cartloads of building supplies. I'm sure you would give you a good start. In exchange, I would ask a small favor. Until you repay the debt in full, you would simply assume the obligation of contracting building services through Rostov's Builders Guild. Do we have a deal? Um... Well, I'm a naive new noble who probably believes he needs uh, <coughs> resources. Um, no, I would be happy to accept your offer. Then it's a deal. I'll get everything in order right away and schedule delivery immediately. Alright, well, it was nice meeting you. This feeling is mutual, I assure you. I look forward to hearing more of your dazzling successes soon. Alright, Kassil Aldori. Today is a historic day for Restov and maybe all of Brevoy. So, how do you like our little gathering? I hope you've made some useful connections. Shall we move on to the official proceedings? Um, yeah, before we begin, I'd like to talk about the envoy I'll be taking with me. My apprentice, Cassil Aldori, will go with you, won't he? No, I believe Young Lander will come with me. Oh, the heir of House Lebeda. <laughs> Naive enough to think no one would recognize him here. I wouldn't trust him. Who knows what he has in mind? Um, yeah. But I also wouldn't trust the person you'd hadn't picked for me, or that your main rival had. So honestly, he seems like the lesser of three evils. I am ready for the ceremony. Excellent. Stand here. Lords and ladies! Today, we are here to honor three brave people who have done the impossible. They've tamed the stolen lands. Baron Hannes Drelev, the new master of Glinnabon, Captain Mager Varn, the conqueror of Dunsward, and finally, the tamer of the Shrike Hills, who put an end to the atrocities of the Stag Lord's bandits. Step forward. On behalf of the people of the free city of Restov, I confer upon you this noble title. Rise, your grace. The celebration is over. Now it's time to return to the stolen, stolen lands. This time not as a simple adventurer, but as the rightful ruler. Victory. The Stag Lord's dead, and the capital of the new barony has been built in place of his fort. That was how the long and challenging taming of the Stolen Lands began. Keston Garras. Welcome, Your Grace. Keston salutes you. You can see he's a bit anxious, but it seems he'd rehearsed this speech many times. Let me once again congratulate you on your victory and your new title. 
Lady Germandi transferred me here. I am at your disposal. I am not one of the, I am not one to bestow honors, but I want you to know I am glad to serve you. I am here to welcome you on behalf of your new capital citizens. The Staglord's former stronghold will soon be a thriving city. Word travels fast and the first settlers have already arrived, with new ones approaching as we speak. While you are visiting Restov, much has been done here. Your benefactors, the Eldori, invested a great deal of resources in rebuilding the city. I stand ready to answer your questions and show you around the most important sites. What's the mood of the people here? I must admit, I've never seen anything like that my whole life. A city, a whole barony, born right in front of our eyes. The people sense the moment, and today we are, we're feeling proud. As a rule, I'm not too cheerful or chatty. I'd normally feel out of place among all the rejoicing. But today is just one of those days. Um, where are my companions? They're all somewhere around here, but I never kept an eye on who went where exactly. Well, I assume Tristian is with Jod. You can always find Lindsay. Just follow the noise and turmoil. Are there any citizens I should know about? Our old acquaintance Jod is right here. Arastal's clerics normally don't like cities much, but he's eager to serve you. Also, the emissary from Brevoy is here, waiting for you in the throne room. There's also this current curious matter. An elf has paid us a visit. A blind elf. Desna only knows how to... Desna only knows how he managed to get here. He seems a peaceful, even pleasant fellow, though naturally a little odd. So I let him stay a while. It's up to you to decide what to do with him now. That's about it, I guess. Keston Strat scratches his head. Oh. The main question is, where can I get a drink or three? It's time to toast my victory. Keston hesitates a br brief moment, then laughs. I'll make sure to show you, the moment we enter the city... The tavern was the first business that opened. Building a city is thirsty work, and um, I beg your forgiveness for my behavior during your reception. I drank a little too much. It is a day for celebration. I am ready to look around the city. Lead the way. Follow me, your grace. Greetings, your grace. We are, well... Your new subjects, we're selecting a site to build our house. It's wet near the lake and windy up here on the hill. A fine place to grow, throw garbage at your neighbors' heads, though. Ouch. It's a good thing you got rid of those monsters and bandits, your grace. <coughs> Do you recognize this place, Your Grace? This is where the Stag Lord's fortress wall, wall used to be. Not that it saved him in the end, huh? Well, yeah. I talked his uh, I talked his guards into opening the doors, the gates. I mean, our workers did a fine job turning this bandit den into the heart of a town of the town. The heart of every town is its main square. We plan to hold street festivities and fairs here. Look, we already have our first vendor. Greetings, Your Grace. If you turn up to the right from the square, you'll end up straight in our tavern. <coughs> The tavern's ale is blessed by Caden Callian himself, I swear, and the lady who owns it is a gem. I've heard our baron is... Okay, there are people gossiping about me. Okay, got it. Welcome, your grace. Glad to serve you. Your Grace, those are our guards. They keep order in the city, or keep their mouths busy, something or other. 
Here's the observation platform. I hope one day your capital will grow large enough that we won't be able to see to its full extent from this perch. That would be a very large city, considering how high up this looks. The building in the front of us is your residence. That's where we'll head to now. So now we've reached the main chambers. This is the throne room, where, where you'll hold court and receive visitors. Let me draw your attention to this large map, depicting your barony and its surroundings. We'll mark all the important scout reports and other, new, newsworthy, and other news worthy of your grace's attention. Having finished his speech, Keston tucks his thumbs under his belt and stands quietly. Lander Lebeda. Hello, my dear friend. Lander Libetta, the young noble from Brevoy who you've chosen as an emissary, greets you with a distracted nod. I'm glad to see you in good health. I don't see how you remain so steady in these circumstances. He makes a wide gesture with his hand, obviously meaning something larger than your throne room. But in truth, I shouldn't worry. A little effort in this barony will become a rich and prosperous land, right? Let's see, barony effects. Community plus six, loyalty plus six, military plus three, economy plus three... Divine plus three, arcane plus three, stability plus three. New event, trade agreement with Sertova, agreement with Yosef Salimus, Ezvanki's offer, pillage the Temple of the Elk, rebuild the Temple of the Elk. Alright. Since ruling seems to be a new thing for you, I'll put the matter simply. There are two kinds of issues that the Baron must address. Boring ones and amusing ones. You'll have servants and advisors to handle all the boring problems, and you can give them orders from wherever it pleases you. But sometimes an urgent matter will arise, a dragon attack, or the visit of some noble dignitary like myself. Events like these demand the Baron's personal presence in the capital. We'll mark these events on the map, too. Alright. Difficulty level of your barony. Okay. According to ancient tradition of Brevoy and most of the river kingdoms, rulers in these parts find it convenient to receive visitors and chop off heads at the beginning of each month. I know well that traditions can be tedious, but nevertheless, I advise you to visit the capital on important days. But there's the, but here's the main thing. You should start choosing people to fill key positions right away. Your clerics, Jod and Tristian, were the first to beg for an audience. I'll leave you to your thoughts for now. I'm sure you'll make wa wise decisions. Of that, I have no doubt. Okay, well, how do I do... I love that it shows me this message about difficulty level of your barony, but it's like I don't even have an opportunity to do anything with that yet, so there we go. Jod Kavkin. Your Grace, allow me to congratulate you on receiving the title of Baron. I am confident that you will be able to bring order to these troubled lands. Though, to be honest, that isn't exactly what we wanted to speak to you about. Tristian and I have been talking a great deal about what happened at the Temple of the Elk. It doesn't all make sense to us yet, but so one thing is clear. There's a powerful curse at work. It corrupted the very essence of that sacred place, steeping it with putrescence. Ugh, I am disgusted with whoever could do this. It was the Stag Lord's uh, druid father, and he's been taken care of. And now there is a new woe. Tristian and I believe the curse did not simply disperse on its own accord. There is a place near the capital rumored by the locals to be cursed. Tristian and I visited this dreadful place, and we felt the same putrescence as at the Temple of the Elk. Alright, what is this place, and where is it? There is a bald hilltop not far from here, to the north of the capital. Its crown is entirely barren of life. The locals believe 
that rituals glorifying the dark gods were held here, back in the ancient times. There is no longer any trace of such rituals, but the air around the hilltop is heavy to the point of stifling. This place is like a rotting wound, closed but not healed. Let's see, bald hilltop has been revealed. And this wound will undoubtedly open again. Tristine and I felt something approaching, something on, ominous. The curse will soon return to plague us once more. I swear by Arastil. Alright, I will go there as soon as I am able then. I would be happy to accompany you, but I would not expect to see anything new there at present. Okay, Tristian. I agree with Tristian. We have been to this hilltop. It's barren, but filled with a dense atmosphere of unease. Okay, well, what do you suggest then? The curse will grow in strength, and we predict it will reach the peak of its strength in about one month. That's when we should visit the bald hilltop and resolve this issue. For now, we can only wait and prepare. We beg your pardon, Your Grace, for intervening with you, getting the grasp of your barony. I'm sure you have even more pressing matters at hand right now. Arrest is in order. Right, barony stats. The barony has ten basic stats, each supervised by an advisor. They are as follows. Population, Regent. Loyalty, Counselor. Military, General, Economy, Treasurer, Divine, High Priest, Relations, Grand Diplomat, Stability, Warden, Magic, Magister, Culture, Curator, Espionage, Minister. Stats increase if your governance is successful and decrease if events don't end well or other negative factors are placed in your way. Don't let your barony stats drop to zero or lower. This will cause your subjects to riot and your state will begin to crumble. Each stat, ha stat has a certain milestones or ranks within them. Every 20 points in a stat will increase your rank. Rank 1 unlocks a corresponding advisor position for that stat. Further development of the stat upgrades to its ranks will be possible only if you had an have an advisor in the relevant position. Governing your barony will require one advisor for each stat. You may appoint your companions as well as some of the Stolen Land citizens to these advisor positions. Each of the ten positions has at least three characters who are qualified to hold it. Not all of these characters will be willing to serve you right away. Some of them will need to be convinced. Appointing others will require completing an assignment for them or rendering them some other service. Every advisor acts on their own ideology. They have their own opinions and everything that happens in your domain. Therefore, you may want to select characters whose governance philosophy is consistent with your own. Open the advisor tab on the right side of the screen. Select, click in an empty slot, and select a character to appoint them as advisor. Every barony stat gains a bonus from a specific ability of the appointed advisor. The exact size of the bonus is indicated in the upper right hand corner of the advisor's card. Only advisors may address the problems, opportunities, and sudden events that occur in your domain and require immediate attention. Don't leave these positions vacant. Choose a name for your barony. The name of the barony cannot be changed later in the game. Alright then. I'm not going to call my barony the Stolen Lands. That makes me sound like a thief. Hmm. Hmm. What should we call this? We call it Cerulea. Um.
No, nope. I think I'll call it Aria. <clears throat> it is the Barony of Aria. Alright, so what we got here? Projects. Rebuild the Temple of the Elk. Pillage the Temple of the Elk. Zenki's Offer. Agreement with uh, Yosef. Trade agreement with someone. Okay. Economy. All those things still. Regions. Claim the outskirts as part of my thing. Advisors. Here we go. Alright, Regent. The Regent ensures subjects, complaints, and concerns are heard by the ruler and serves as a link between the Baron and the people. Choose an advisor to fill this position. Advisors will act according to their position in government, their beliefs, and their alignment. Choose an advisor for this position. Alright. Counselor. Counselor deals with troubles of common folk and helps settle land disputes and agricultural matters. This advisor ensures citizens remain loyal to the throne. Choose an advisor to fill this position. Advisors will act according to their position in government, their beliefs, and their alignment. Tristian would be good at this. Patrina wouldn't be would be the second choice. Okay. General. The general is the highest ranking officer in the army of the barony and is responsible for watching the borders and protecting the realm. Choose an advisor to fill this position. All right, who are my options here? <laughs> Pathrowina could fill it, but she'd be terrible. Regongar would be excellent. Okay, that's the highest stat I've seen for any of these yet. The treasurer's duty is to keep the coffers of the barony full and ensure any gold is spent is spent wisely. Alright, ooh, Patharina's my only choice right now. And High Priest. No matter what deity he serves, the High Priest strives to satisfy the spiritual needs of all citizens in the barony. There's Jod, there's Harem, and Patharina. Let's see, Jod does his best to solve problems without disrupting local traditions. Harem favors unusual but effective solutions. Yeah, let's put Harem in there. I'm fine with that. I have no one who would make a decent treasurer. Alright, let's make Regongar my general. Oh, I didn't see what it said about him. He is hot-headed and direct. Good. That sounds like what I want in a general. Alright, my counselor. Tristian cares for the people all over, over all other concerns. Yeah, Tristian, you can be my counselor. Alright, my regent. Tavia, Valerie, or Lander? Valerie strives to follow the letter of the law. Octavia always strives to solve problems peacefully. Lander, um, the Beta, makes decisions that favor both his own interests and those of the barony. He's got that plus three. Yeah, we'll make him my regent. I don't have a treasurer. She'd be terrible because she's a mercenary that I hired. Great. Declare the outskirts a part of your kingdom. Choose an advisor to handle this event. Advisors will act according to their position and beliefs. All right. 
Project cost 150 BP. How much BP do I have? 450. They have called this place Tuskdale. Yeah, I think not. No, this is Cerulea, the capital of, uh, I assume this is my capital of Aria. Nothing is built yet. I can build things here. You may construct buildings to increase your barony stats. Each building has a cost in BP and a construction time. You may construct several buildings simultaneously. To start construction, select a building you need from the list on the right side of the screen and place it in an empty slot in the settlement. Buildings may provide special bonuses if you meet certain conditions. Most commonly, two buildings must stand close together to grant the bonus. Make sure you use this feature to your full benefit when planning a settlement. Some buildings can be placed only in designated spots or areas. For example, a pier must be built on water, and a mill must be built with no other buildings around it. Demolish a building to get rid of it and recover half the resources you spent on construction. If you want to move a building, you will have to demolish the old one and construct it in the new desired spot slot for half the price. You won't have to spend any extra BP, but you will have to wait for construction to finish on the new location. Okay, interesting. Alright. So barracks would give me military plus one. Brewery would give me relations plus one. Granary would give me community plus one. Herbalist's house is loyalty plus one. And... Uh, Let's see. Plus one to Arcane, one adjacent to a shrine. Longhouse can be upgraded to Town Hall. It gives community, divine, and culture. Lumberyard, a mill for producing pre cut logs, boards, and wood materials needed for construction. Plus one relations when located in the settlement with peers. A sacred grove cannot be built in the settlement housing a lumberyard. Monolith. Great ancient stones from this complex structure, which druids use to track the motions of their stars. Plus one to divine when built in a separate slot. Restricted to baronies with a neutral alignment. Okay. Monument. This is community and loyalty. Here's can be upgraded to marina warehouses and workshops for dog okay shop it's economy plus one plus one to economy when adjacent to a tavern a small divine a small shrine or similar holy site plus one to divine when adjacent to a monument plus one loyalty when adjacent to a longhouse okay Smithy military uh, plus one economy when adjacent to a shop. Tavern place for eating, drinking, and asking the host about local rumors. Plus one to relations when adjacent to a longhouse. Plus one to espionage when adjacent to a barracks. Watchtower tall structure that serves as a guard post. Plus one military when located in a settlement with a barracks. Plus one to stability when located in a settlement with walls. Could only be built in a separate slot. Separate slot? Oh, like this over here. Okay. Which is also somewhere where a mill could be built, I believe. Which does what? Community plus one. Um, plus one to community if located in a settlement with a granary or a brewery. Plus two if there's both. Okay. And then wooden wall. Plus one to military. 
Okay, what's the brewery do? Plus one. When located in a settlement with a tavern. Okay. So, in theory, I build probably the longhouse in the middle. And then I'd want the tavern, I think, next to it. I for eating, drinking, asking the host about local rumors. Plus one to relations when adjacent to a longhouse. Plus one espionage when adjacent to a barracks. What does a barracks get? Plus one stability when adjacent to a longhouse. Ooh. So I can't completely synergize those buildings because they'd all three have to be adjacent to each other. Got it. Does the tavern get when it's adjacent to the longhouse? Plus one to relations when adjacent. Oh, it's plus one to espionage when adjacent to the barracks. So maybe I'll skip those two being adjacent to each other. The shop is plus one economy when adjacent to the tavern. But things are getting kind of long. We will just deal with what we're actually going to build and what things we take care of next time. Arrest is in order. It is. Thank you very much for tuning in. This has been Pathfinder Kingmaker, the Chronicle of Arius Cyril, and I am some guy you've never heard of. Unless, of course, you have. <laughs>